Wow. The rain has gone away and we have a little bit of wind, but the sun is coming out and it's gorgeous. It's 7.30 in the morning and we had a wonderful night last night meeting everybody from all of the van groups around here. We stayed up pretty late, but a couple of us had early morning wake-ups. So now it's time for some coffee. We chose this spot in Seward, Alaska, along the glacier-fed Resurrection River with a purpose in mind. The Kenai Peninsula has a lot to offer when it comes to exploration, and the two of us couldn't possibly do it all on our own. So, we picked these four days for our first annual Midnight Sun Revel Meetup for our group members to enjoy sightseeing adventures of their own and spend time getting to know each other before our 1,000-mile, 15-day expedition north to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. And while our group members enjoyed whale-watching tours, bears, and hikes to glaciers, Jim, Ember, and I stayed in town to visit with those that stayed behind. Good morning. Happy Sunday morning. So this is day three. Day three? Day three. Everything has been going good so far. We had a whole bunch of people show up last night, which was kind of interesting. It was two different meetups merged into one and a bunch of different personalities. And we kind of had to hint that we were ready for bed <laughs> to get it to end. So we decided today was the day we needed to take a shower. So we came into town, dumped our tanks. Now we're going to take our showers, but after all that rain, this is pretty welcoming. So this is a fantastic spot that we chose to take a shower. Let's take our showers. Now what else are we going to do? I think I want to go to Zooties and get breakfast. Because we're going to Zooties for breakfast. I think that we're meeting up with some of our fellow revelers and we're going to go take a hike up Exit Glacier. But we haven't made any major plans with them yet, but I'm hoping we get the chance to hang out with them a little bit more. All right, let's get the showers going.
After that amazing breakfast, we were off on our own to explore the little town of Seward and spend some time together, watching the locals fish at their favorite spot. When we returned to camp, we had another van lifer and subscriber join our party. Meow Van Life. Two young, fun adventurers in their self built Ram Promaster traveling around the country with their three cats. These guys brought life to our party as we waited for members of our group to return from their adventures to tell their stories and enjoy each other's company until the sun never set. You brought the rain? No, it's coming and going. So how was it? Oh, amazing. I am so glad that we postponed it till today. It was incredible. Did you see whales? Yes. Yeah. Orcas, back. Oh, like orcas jumping up? Yeah, doing yeah. that high thing. Yeah. This morning we slept in till about noon, had our coffee, enjoyed the sunshine, went over and to talk to our friend Mr. Bill, and now we're in Seward just hanging out. And we were told about these free showers here at the campground, so I'm going to go in and check that out just to see what it's like and tell you guys what the free showers are like because I didn't know they existed and one of our friends just told him about them yesterday. I mean, we of course have a free shower. <laughs> I don't mind our shower. <laughs> uh, sometimes it, we do have to pull a lot of stuff to get to our shower, and I just showered yesterday, so I don't really need one today. I just figured I'd go in and see what it's like. Absolutely. All right. 
Probably shouldn't take the camera in there though. <laughs> okay, I'll go check it out. We dropped off our ice at camp and now we're headed to Exit Glacier. Go for a little bit of hot, maybe. We might have possibly picked up some new friends along the way that are joining us, so we'll see if they meet us. And then one of our friends also just told us that there might be a mask requirement at the glacier since it's a national park. We are very happy that the weather just cleared up. And that's kind of why we want to do the glacier today, because things are clearing up a little bit. Eighteen ninety-nine, and wow, it's packed. Getting comfy. Hiking shoes are a little bit better than uh, extra toughs. A trail. We're gonna leave Ember behind on this one because there's a lot of people, and her feet are still a little bit sore from the past couple of days, so we're just going to let her rest. She's got the fan going. There are some glaciers that you can drive up to in the world, but very few that you can stroll to. With just a 15-minute drive outside of Seward, you can hike right up to Kenai Fjords National Park's Exit Glacier, one of the most visited glaciers in the world. The setting has a primal feel, scoured bedrock, jagged ice, rushing water, and new vegetation. And of course, a lot of people. The Exit Glacier Trail is flat and well-maintained, very much a path from the visitor center, and you walk about a half mile to the toe of the glacier. These paths feature a vivid journey into natural history where you'll see how the vegetation has rebounded and flourished in response to the gradual melting and recession of Exit Glacier. Markers have been placed showing retreating locations of the glacier's toe over the past 120 years. Our next adventure will go beyond this hike and take us to the Harding Icefield Trail a four-mile hike that parallels the glacier's north edge on a 3,000-foot ascent to the ice field. This is a day hike where we plan to hike up but stay the night. How was it? It was awesome. It was amazing. Good. Can't wait to do it again next time. Isn't it beautiful <laughs> up there? Highly recommend.
after that fun little hike, we drove back to our camp to take care of a few chores we had been putting off simply because we didn't have the right tools. Our back window back here had a little bit of stick as we were trying to open and close it. And Patrick showed us this little dry lube and we just spray it onto the back window joists and then it frees it back up. So good idea if you have that issue, this is the stuff to use. All right, so it's probably ill-advised to try this, but I really want to try to see if I can hike this mountain right here. So I'm thinking about trying to make my way back that way, seeing if I can cross. I'm gonna use this handy dandy stick here that Patrick made. And then once I get across, if I can get across, I'm gonna try to make my way up this sort of, you know, kind of see it go up there. Where the ice is sort of cut back right a little bit. And then it continues up where the clouds are, but that's where I might really question for if I can actually. The real question is, can I get across the river? To me, that's the real question. Once I get across the river, I know I should be to make it like, I don't know, even if only a quarter way up, I'd be satisfied. But I want to try to, you know, go So what's your plan to get across the river? Um, I mean, I'm going to try to find a narrower spot where I can uh, kind of wade in, take my shoes off, and use this kind of ahead of me to make sure it never drops too deep. Because if it gets like above my knees or uh, close to waist, I probably just won't go for it. But if I can stay anywhere like around this area, I think I'm going to try to cross. So, but if I feel uncomfortable, I'm just not going to do it because, you know, I'm just trying to do this for fun. Okay. We'll see, we'll we'll see what We'll be rooting you on from here. Thank you. Okay. All right. Give me a kiss and you go. <laughs> and he's following you. Patrick is following you with his drone. All right. <laughs> going off into the wild. What do you think of this idea, babe? I think it is a terrible, terrible idea. And he ain't making it across that river. <laughs> he will not make it. Well, Patrick's going to keep his eye on him from here. <laughs> the is so much deeper. <laughs> I know. I don't think Oh, he's on a peninsula trying to cross this uh, oh, he's isthmus. Making it. You think he's gonna make it? Ooh, this is getting it's... up to his. Uh... He's at his knees now. I feel like as it gets closer to the um, the mountain, it's deeper. Like he's gonna run into some really deep water. Oh, he's... Oops. Oh, if you miss it, comes. Ooh, one more big one. Yeah, but then he's going to be wet and cold and climbing a mountain. Like, <laughs> he should have taken... take any food or water. <laughs> Flare gun. He didn't even take boots. <laughs> he's going to climb the mountain in his chacos. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another Instant Pot Inspiration. Today we're going to do a halibut recipe with the halibut that Cynthia caught. Thank goodness. So this is going to be a really quick recipe. Uh, we're going to add in a little bit of olive oil. Make sure your Instant Pot's on saute. We're going to add in some jalapenos. A couple tablespoons of minced garlic. About half a can of green olives. Add in some pepper and some salt. all together real well. Add in a pound of halibut. Over the top we're going to add two cans of diced tomatoes. We don't want to stir this in. We just let them cook over the top. Half a cup of water. A 
We'll seal up our instant pot, take it off saute, and we're going to pressure cook on high for five minutes. Once the pressure cooking is complete, then we'll do a quick release and let all that steam out immediately and then put it back on saute and make sure that it's flaky and done. If it's not flaky, then we put it back in for a couple more minutes. Over here we're making some rice. And our friend Mr. Bill, who is camped over there, he is one of our subscribers and He's been really good to us this entire trip. And he brought us this cutting board made by Yeti. And it usually goes in their cooler, but it fits perfectly along here to help with cooking and Jim's Instant Pot inspirations because we can just lay everything out and not have to cut on the glass or a wooden cutting board. Our five minute cook time is released, uh, is complete. So we're gonna do a quick release. It smells so good right now. It doesn't even smell fishy. Even though he's cooking halibut, it smells like kind of tomatoey and garlic. I don't, I don't smell the halibut. Pressure valve has dropped. Oof. That does smell amazing. Check our halibut real quick. Make sure it's flaky. Oh, look at that. So that's what you're looking for with a well-cooked halibut, is it's just really flaky meat. All right, so that's gonna be good to go. Scoop up our rice. Squeeze some lemon over the top. A bit of cilantro. That's some pretty good stuff right there. This is some fresh halibut. Hmm. Good stuff. Let's eat. This is the bowl we're gonna share with our friends outside. Let's see what they think. I'm making this plate for Mr. Bill to try and give us his opinion of it. Love me, Daddy. Love me, Daddy. Oh, wow. Oh, very good. Got flavor. Most halibut flounder. Wonderful white meat fish. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. And as everyone returned from another full day of fun to camp, we sat around the fire and listened to each other's stories and once again watched the sun never set. Little by little, piece by piece, I take back what's been stolen from me. Little by little, piece by piece. Until I'm complete I got my eyes on you And you got no clue What I'm supposed to do I can't help my
Oh, they went to Fair Falls? Mm-hmm. Nice. Let me just see those pictures. Several of our group members booked a bucket list adventure of a lifetime out of Homer, two hours south of Seward. Hopping on a small charter plane, they flew to Katmai National Park, home to Brooks Falls, where every summer, sockeye salmon swim up the river to their spawning point and the Alaska brown bears gather to fish and get fat and happy for the winter. This is about as up close and personal as you can get with the bears in the wild, and it's certainly an experience and story for these guys they'll be telling for a lifetime to come. Ten o'clock. It's still gorgeous. Everybody's getting ready to go to bed. So, what have we learned today? We've created something wild and wonderful here in Alaska with this first annual Winnebago Revel Midnight Sun Expedition. It's off to a beautiful start with group members choosing their own adventures and coming back to share their stories. Building bonds and confidence in themselves, their vehicles, and us to lead them on to the next adventure. 
So off we go to explore the great wilds of Alaska. And to follow along with us, be sure to hit that notification bell to know when we release our next video. Feel free to subscribe to wake up with us on Sunday mornings as we take you along with us on our expedition north to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Let us know where in the world you're watching from. We love to hear from you in the comments below. And until we see you next time, stay happy, healthy, and safe. We'll see you again soon.